Hey, GED students. I had a student uh, message a light and salt on Facebook, and I hope I'm saying your name right, Naledi. Um, she had a question about the experience level practice um, on combining like terms from the GED math crash course. So that's our GED math crash course that we have where you can teach yourself the math, math for the GED. She was working on the medium level practice there and got stumped by some tricky looking problems. And I say, no wonder you got stumped. This is a little more complicated. So, you know, the lesson we were doing was on combining like terms. Uh, what combining like terms is, as you know, since you did the, the problems before that, is that's the addition and subtraction we do in the land of algebra. But you know, adding and subtracting are not the only kind of simplifying we do. Just like in elementary school, after we learned to add and subtract, the next thing we learned to do was multiply. Um, the next thing we usually learn after adding and subtracting in algebra is how to multiply in the land of algebra. And so that's this concept known as distribution. Basically, multiplication can pass out to every term in a parenthesis. So that's multiplication in the land of algebra. So if you've never done distribution, you've never done multiplication, you would have been stumped on these problems. And that's why I had them as the experience level practice, because they definitely require that you've got a little bit of algebra experience. But don't worry, there is distribution in the crash course as well. Uh, but let me go ahead and show you what I mean. So I'm going to grab up a different color pen so I can show you that this positive 7 here is shoved up against this parentheses. That means that that positive 7 is multiplying by everything in that grouping. And I hope you know, if you've been watching my videos, you definitely know that when we're simplifying, we follow the order of operations. Uh, Gemma is my abbreviation for the order of operations. So G-E-M-A. We're supposed to do groupings first, then any exponents, then any multiplication uh, and division, and then finally addition and subtraction. That's the order we move in as we simplify. Well, now, if you take a look here, I cannot do this grouping. We learned in this lesson that you were working on that we are only allowed to subtract, add or subtract like terms. And 1 and negative 3m are not like. This first guy is a constant term. It's a plain old number. And this guy's an M term, right? His variable portion is an M. We identify terms by their variable portion. So I'm not going to be able to combine them. And so I can't deal with this grouping. Now, there are no exponents here. So the next thing I'm supposed to do is any multiplication. So before you can start your combining like terms, before you can start your addition and subtraction, you have got to do this multiplication. So let me, I won't talk so much through the rest of the examples, but for this one, I need to make sure that you understand. This is what I'm doing. I'm passing this seven out. I'm multiplying it by everything in the parentheses. So let's do that. Now, as I multiply it, I'm thinking of this not as plus seven, but as positive seven. When you multiply, read that as a positive. So positive seven times one. What is positive seven times one? Well, positive seven times one is positive seven. Or another way to think of it, if you add seven one time, you're just adding seven. Beautiful. And now let's go on and let's say positive seven times negative three M. Positive. So I have negative three M seven times. Well, if I have negative 3m seven times, well, let me write it out seven times, I have negative 3, negative 6, negative 9, negative 12, negative 15, negative 18, negative 21m. Or I could just be lazy and multiply that 7 times that 3 and shove an M on its backside, okay? <laughs> so uh, positive 7 times negative 3M. I read that as negative 3M as I multiply. Okay, great. So I finished my multiplication. Now, as always, when you're simplifying or solving whatever, you're just going to drop down whatever you haven't touched, whatever you haven't used yet that you need to use in the next step. So I haven't done anything with my negative 4 yet, so now I'm going to drop it. And now, now that you've done your multiplication, this should look like the other problems you were doing. Now it's time to combine those like terms. So I can see here that I do have two constant terms, plain old numbers. 
constants can always combine. If you're not very good at negative numbers, feel free to do this in your GED calculator. You would have one uh, whenever you have a problem like this on the test. So negative four plus seven would give me positive three. So I end up with positive three. And then there are no other M terms. This is the only M term, negative 21M. So I just drop it negative 21M. Now, I do want to point out that sometimes people will write the terms in the opposite order. It doesn't really matter what order you write them in. So I'm not sure. I'm not looking at the answer key right now. It could be written with the M term first. So negative 21M. And the constant term second. And that's a positive 3, so I would write plus 3. Um, either one of those answers are perfectly correct, okay? So whether you write 3 minus 21M or negative 21m plus 3, these two things are totally and completely equivalent. So they're both absolutely right, okay? So let's look at a few more examples now that we've got this skill here, uh, build it up and stretch our muscles. So um, from that worksheet you were looking at, uh, Naledi, this is number 21, and I'm going to do odds for you. So let's look at number 23 from that combining uh, like terms worksheet from Kuta worksheet. Okay, so this one doesn't look like multiplication. Students don't recognize this as multiplication. They're like, Kate, what in the world? Um, I don't see any multiplication here, but take a look. Do you see how this negative is shoved up against this parentheses here? Yes, one way to think of that is like that whole thing is subtracting. Yes, that is one way to think of it. Or another way to think of it is like we're multiplying by a negative one. Just like when you don't have a coefficient out front of a letter, there's no number out front of a letter, you know, if there's no uh, number next to X, it's one X. Same thing with the parentheses. If there's no number shoved up there, it's like it's a one. So this is like I'm taking negative one and multiplying by everything in the parentheses. I should have done that in a different color. Let's do that in a different color because I wrote it in. All right, so that negative one there then is grouped. It's shoved up against those parentheses, so it is multiplying. So let's do that. Negative one times positive nine. And again, you can do it in your TI if you're not good with negatives, but it gives me negative nine. And then negative one times negative 10 N. Again, if you needed to do that in your TI, you wouldn't be able to put the N in, but you could put the numbers in. Negative one times negative 10. But I'm so lazy. I know that all that happens when I multiply by negative 1 is it's going to change my sign. So that's going to turn into a positive or plus 10n. Okay, now I've done my multiplication. I need to drop down that front term. It wasn't involved in the multiplying, so it's just chilling out here negative 2n. And now it's time to combine like terms. This time I don't see two constant terms. This time I see two n terms. Negative 2n and positive 10n are like terms. They have the same variable portion. They can combine. Again, if you need to do it in your calculator, type negative 2 plus 10, and you'll find out you get 8. 8 what? Well, if I'm adding and subtracting n's, that's 8 n's. Beautiful. And now there's no other constant term, so I just drop down that minus 9. Final answer is 8n minus 9. And again, if you had it in the opposite order, if you had negative 9 plus 8n, they're absolutely equivalent. They mean the same thing. Nobody's going to mark you wrong. Okay. All right. And if this, is, this was on the GED, it would be multiple choice, so it's important that you can recognize uh, when the answer, even though it isn't written like yours, is equivalent to yours. Okay, and next example, we're just, why did I do this one? This one's easy. Okay, well, we'll be good at it then. So I hope by now you can see that there is some multiplication here, and I should definitely do my multiplication before I deal with my addition subtraction. So that's a positive 10 multiplying by everything in that grouping. Let's give it a try. Positive 10 times 6a. Well, 10 times 6 is 60. Positive 60. So I'll have positive 60a. Positive 10 times negative 1. And again, you can do it in your calculator if you need to, but I promise you that's just negative 10. And we will drop down that front term, that 9a term. He wasn't involved in the multiplication. Uh, and so I'm saving him for the addition subtraction step. And that time, 
is now. Let's combine like terms. That's what we call adding and subtracting in algebra because we can only add and subtract if they're the same kinds of things. So if I have nine A's and then I have another 60 A's, I have a total of 69 A's. And then there are no other constant terms, plain old numbers, so it just drops and I have negative 10. So that's 69 A minus 10. Or of course, negative 10, that was a negative 10 plus 69A, also a legit answer. All right, two more. Wanted to do this one because it looks so gross, looks so scary. Don't panic. It's the same basic process. It's just this time there's more than one act of multiplication going on. Let's take a look. First thing I notice is that this negative 10 is shoved up against this parentheses. So that negative 10 is multiplying with everything in that grouping and just in that grouping. So we're going to pass it out uh, to the two terms in that parentheses. So negative 10 times 1 is negative 10. And negative 10 times negative 9x. Be sure you read that sign in front of it. Negative 10 times negative 9x. Well, negative times a negative is positive. 10 times 9 is 90. And shove an x on the back side to say they're multiplying. And notice, now that I did the multiplication, those parentheses are gone. I used them up. Okay, um, so let me pull out another color so you can see the other act of multiplication. This time I have a positive 6 multiplying by everything in this parentheses. Let's do that as well. Positive 6 times 10 is positive 60. And positive 6 times negative x would give me negative 6x. Okay, a positive times a negative is a negative. And then I just have the 6 and the x shoved together to say they're multiplying. Great. Now that I finished my multiplication, uh, like we said when we're simplifying, we do multiplication and division before we do addition and subtraction. So now that I finished my multiplication, now I can do my uh, combining like terms, my adding, subtracting. So this time... I do see two constant terms, two plain old numbers, negative 10 and positive 60. And again, if you were going to put that in your TI, you would put negative 10 plus 60. Negative 10 plus 60 is 50. And then I have two X terms. I have positive 90X. Notice my good habit of picking up the sign with it. Uh, a lot of students miss the sign in front and then make silly errors and negative 6x. So if you're going to type this into your calculator, you need to type 90, sorry, just developed a stutter apparently. You need to type 90 minus 6. Your TI is a little stupid. If you type 90 and then just negative 6, it won't know what to do. So do type 90 minus 6. Okay, so 90 minus 6 is going to give me 84, but this is a positive 84, so I'll write positive 84x. Okay. Again, this could be written in either order. So it could be that the positive 84x is out front and the positive 50 is behind. Uh, those two things mean the same thing. And I don't remember which one's in the answer key. I definitely do not have the answer key memorized. All right. Last one. Okay. looks nice and gross. Um, ooh, I meant to have uh, one with a minus sign. So I must have just picked the wrong one to write down, but just do me a favor. Let's pretend like this said minus because there are definitely some examples there that have negatives. And that's where students tend to mess up. So let's do it with a couple of negatives. It's okay. It won't match, match the answer key, but we're still getting practice. So let's try this. Let's do negative three. And we can see that negative three is smashed up against these parentheses. So it is multiplying by everything in there. Let's go. Negative three times 10b is negative 30b. And negative 3 times positive 10 is negative 30. Now I can also see that's not the only act of multiplication here. I have a negative 5. Remember to take its sign with it when you multiply. That's why I wanted to change the sign so we'd get practice with that skill. Times all of that junk. So let's try. Negative 5 times b is negative 5b. And don't forget to take that minus sign. Negative 5 times positive 2 is negative 10. 
All right, and now it's time to combine like terms. Negative 30B is a B term. It will only add and subtract with other B terms. So here's another B term. So negative 30B minus 5B. If you need your calculator to help you type negative 30 minus 5, and you'll get negative 35B. And then I have some constant terms as well, some plain old numbers. I have negative 30 and I have negative 10. So if you're going to type that in your calculator, you're going to need to type negative 30. Use a negative button out front, but then minus 10. Use a minus button between numbers. And that's a little tricky for students to remember. So negative 30 minus 10, and that will give me negative 40. All right. Oh, I should keep acknowledging, or you could have negative 40 minus 35b. The order of the terms does not matter. All right. If you have any questions about this or any other GED math topic, be sure to drop it in the comments and I'll do my best to answer it.